Happy Easter to everyone. And welcome to Trinity Lutheran in beautiful downtown. Uh, uh, welcome to folks who uh, have not been here before. Um, our service begins with a prayer of confession. And in that prayer of confession, we observe some silence. And it's extended silence. Uh, and I encourage you to uh, focus on the breath, uh, to release with the out breath, and to welcome uh, a new breath of peace, a new gift of life from God. The rest of the service uh, you'll, you'll find in the, in the pamphlet, and it's pretty self-explanatory. At Holy Communion, we invite everyone uh, who is so moved to receive communion, and we will gather around. <laughs> The second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Paul writes, The first thing I did was place before you what was placed so emphatically before me, that Jesus was buried, that he was raised from death on the third day, that he presented himself alive to Peter, then to his closest followers, and later to more than 500 of his followers, all at the same time, most of them still around, although a few have since died. That he then spent time with James and the rest of those he commissioned to represent him, and that he finally presented himself alive to me. It was fitting that I bring up the rear. I don't deserve to be included in that inner circle, as you well know, having spent all those early years trying my best to stamp God's church right out of existence. But because God was so gracious, so very generous, here I am. And I'm not about to let this grace go to waste. Haven't I worked hard trying to do more than any of the others? Even then, my work didn't amount to all that much. It was God giving me the work to do. God giving me the energy to do it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may remain seated. The gospel reading is from the Gospel of John at the 20th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Now Mary stood outside the tomb and she was crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and she saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head, the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They've taken my Lord away, she said. I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it that you're looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have taken him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned around and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to God. Go instead to my brothers and tell them I am ascending to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord, and she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, O oh Christ. Where's Cleo? <laughs> Cleo, come on down here and get with Phoebe and I in the front of the church. Here we go. <clears throat> well, so what happened? Well, they ganged up against Jesus. What did they do to him? Well, they, they, they killed him. Oh, no. And when they killed him, what do we have then, Cleo? Happy face? Or sad face? We have a sad face. Very sad face. We have a very sad face. Because he was dead. Right, he was dead. And they looked for him. And you know what happened when they looked for him, Phoebe? They buried him. Nope. What, what, what happened? They looked for him and he wasn't there. You're kidding. No. Where was he? Well, he rose. And sometimes he appeared to them kind of like a ghost. 
And sometimes he appeared to them and he wasn't recognized. And sometimes they did recognize him. This is really mysterious, right? It's really mysterious what happened. But you know what happened? You know what the big thing that happened? What was that? Do you think that they were frowning then, Cleo? Or do you think they were smiling when they saw Jesus? I think what happened is, at first, they were sad. They were sad. But when they saw Jesus, they were happy, 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 happy. They were happy. Because they knew Jesus was going to be with, he's going to be with God, right? He's going to be with God. So they went from to sad to happy. That's right. Look for Jesus. Right, we're going to look for Jesus. And where do we find Jesus now? Sometimes, sometimes, I can look within me and I see Jesus. You see Jesus. And when I look at Cleo, I look at Cleo real hard, I see Jesus. You see Jesus. And all these other people? Right. I see Jesus in them. Right. Sometimes it's hard to see. <laughs> but if I keep looking around, right, I'll find Jesus. You'll find Jesus. Can you remember that, Cleo? You always got Jesus in you, sweetheart. Always got Jesus in you. Good job. You can go sit down with your mom. Grace and peace be unto you from God, our Creator, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus. May the congregation say amen. amen. I've got three stories to tell, and then we're going to talk about Jesus. Three stories. Here's the first one. This is hypothetical, but not really hypothetical. In the morning, I am informed that we are going to have spaghetti for dinner. Spaghetti with Victoria sauce, which is my favorite. So all day long, I look forward to coming home and having spaghetti. Right. That is my hope and expectation because that's what I was told. Only when I get home and I ask what's for dinner, I am told it's going to be fish and rice and broccoli. <laughs> what is my reaction to this? Why? Why? Or what else is my reaction? My reaction is one of, I'm looking forward to the spaghetti. We're not having spaghetti, my favorite meal. We're not having spaghetti, but we're having fish and rice and broccoli, which is meh. So what is my reaction to this? My reaction emotionally is one of disappointment. Disappointment, disappointment very quickly turns into what? Anger. Disappointment turns to anger, and whose fault is it? Oh, it is Marsha's. It's all, <laughs> it is Marsha's fault. So therefore, I am angry because my hopes and expectations have not been fulfilled, and it is the cook's fault. And therefore, I have dinner, and when I have dinner, I am in a mood which is sweet or sour. Sour, sour mood, and I visit that mood upon my. One. Right, and the mood probably carries on after dinner until breakfast the next morning, and maybe by the afternoon I am over it. All right, over it. Stop. 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 Don't get carried away. Sir. Okay, let's 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 raise the ante a little bit. We're gonna raise the ante. I break my ankle. So all of a sudden, when I break my ankle, what happens? All the hopes and the plans and the expectations for the future have gone up in smoke. Therefore, since I am disappointed, I am also going to be angry. And who will be uh, the recipient of that gift of my anger? Everybody is going to get that, that anger of mine because I am disappointed because I'm stuck. I can't do all the things that I'd hoped and planned to do. My expectations, here's the key concept, expectations have not been fulfilled. So I spend all that recuperation time 
disappointed and cranky. cranky. Sue, you gotta calm down. <laughs> I feel sorry. I feel sorry for you, Steve. All right, calm down. All right, so yeah, right. So I spend all that time angry and cranky. Okay, let's up the ante. Uh, let's let's go a few more. Uh, one more notch. One more notch. I just read this story. It's about a 25-year-old woman who used to race bicycles, and she raced bicycles. They were mountain bikes. And if you've ever seen these, they have like tracks, special dirt tracks. And they go down the tracks and, and they do jumps and turns and all the rest of this stuff. And she was like a world champion in this, Olympic level. And one day she was in a race and it was her last race that she was going to be in. And she crashed. And she broke her back and she broke her neck. <coughs> and she's paralyzed from the waist down. So contemplate that for a moment. All of her visions for her life, for her family life, all they're at, have just disappeared. She is now confined to a wheelchair. This is big time stuff. Right now, she's training to be in the Olympics, the Paralympics, because she's a basketball player and she is in her wheelchair and they play wheelchair basketball. And she made this comment. She said, I got to a point where I said to myself, do I want to be angry for the rest of my life? And she said, I know other people who have been angry and bitter people for 20 years of their lives. But I got to the point where I said, how much longer do I want to continue like this? And then she said to the interviewer, I am as happy as I have ever been in my life right now. Because I made the decision that I was going to live. So let's go back to the beginning. No spaghetti at dinner, so therefore I'm angry and I'm upset, and the reality is it's all her fault, but really whose fault is it? It's my fault. It's up here. Because if I could let go of the hopes and the expectations, I could enjoy the fish and the rice and the broccoli. My suffering is up here. I created my suffering. But if I can let go of the hopes and the expectations, my suffering can be turned into joy. I can enjoy a great meal. But as long as I'm going to hold on to those hopes and expectations, oh, all there is going to be is anger and upset. And it won't just be for me. I will visit it upon my wife. I'll visit it upon everybody else. Because it's not fair. I should be getting my spaghetti. It's not funny. It's how a lot of people live. The broken ankle, the same thing. I can't be angry and upset. Oh, my plans and expectations and hopes have vaporized. Or I can resign myself and accept where I am at and I can rejoice that I've got this time for healing. Rejoice that I have doctors caring for me. Rejoice that I have family that cares about me. Rejoice that I can do some reading, that I can do some study. Rejoice that I can enjoy the house or the view. If I can let go of all of those hopes and expectations and see what is in front of me, my suffering can be turned into joy. And that woman captures that whole dynamic beautifully. She, typically what we say is, you don't understand how much I suffer. You, you just don't get it. It's not that easy for me. 
You don't understand what I'm going through. We defend our suffering. We hold on to it. We, 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 just, we just put this big grip upon it. I'm not going to let it go. And therefore, what happens? Oh, well, I stay angry and bitter is what happens. Can I release the expectations and see the goodness that is? Enjoy the meal? At one sense, look for the goodness and healing. And in that case of that woman who has the broken back, she, she fulfills this whole dynamic so profoundly because she has gone from releasing all those hopes and expectations that she had. And she could see the goodness and actually find happiness and peace in the Lord. Forever. Lord, in your mercy. Carol, your Bring new life, O oh Lord, to all of us who are in the midst of the struggle. Inspire us to act when our actions will make a difference. Inspire us to be still when our actions will be of no value. Give us the wisdom, O oh Lord, to find our way. <coughs> Lord, in your mercy. Here are our we pray for our world that there may be peace. We pray for peace in the Sudan, in the Ukraine, in Haiti, in the Middle East. We pray for peace in our communities. We pray for peace in our homes. We pray for peace, O oh Lord, in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In the silence, O oh Lord, we lift up to you the people for whom we have special concern, and we name them in our hearts. Into your hands we commend ourselves, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your presence through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. God's peace be with you all. And also with you. Get about to share God's peace.
Let us pray our offertory prayer together. Holy Lord, we return to you a symbol of our gratitude, what you have provided for us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Receive them, O Lord, for the sake of Jesus, who shows us the power and possibility which you bring to us and to all. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering the words that Jesus taught us, we are bold to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven. We shall sing the first two verses of the Lamb of God.
Pleasure to stay if you're ready. May Christ strengthen us that we may live in peace. May we live with open eyes, with confidence that God will meet us in all of our tomorrows. May we have the assurance that God will carry us through the rough patches that the Lord is beneath us to be our strength. May we have the assurance that the light of Christ shines behind us to dispel the shadows of the past that we may be set free. May we have the confidence that Christ is above us, where Jesus has prepared a place for us in God's heaven. May we live with the awareness that we live in a sea of blessings. May the Lord open our eyes that we may see them. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us sing together, lift high the cross. Amen. 